Okay, Scott, we are now live. Hey, Chica, how are you? Good. How's it going? It's going well. It's going well. Finally cooling down here in uh, Southern California a little bit. I actually got to wear sleeves tonight. Oh, my it's gosh. A, it's a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there was a heat wave, though, right? Like, oh, like, a, week, like a couple weeks. No, a couple well, of Yeah, ago. I mean, it, that's what you call the entire state being on fire for the last three months. <laughs> um, is but, it still on uh, fire? Like, they don't talk about that on the news anymore. The, you, well, I mean, you know how it is. Um, they, they never really put them out. They just sort of guide them into large forests and let them burn out on their own, and it can take months. So, oh. uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> I don't think they successfully put out any major fires. They just sort of guide them away from people and, you know, hope for, uh, hope for them to go out on their own without doing too much more damage. But no, they're certainly not making the news anymore. So mm, yeah, that's... well, there are, there are more important things to be on the news right now, I guess. So yeah, yeah. The Dodgers are in the World Series. Exactly. Yeah, glad, yeah. I'm glad we've got our priorities straight. Good. <laughs> good, 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 good. Perfect. Yeah. So what are we talking about tonight? So today we're talking about... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So it's 11 in the morning in Japan, and it's 7 o'clock at night here in Southern California. So her today, well, her today is my tonight. So I said tonight, you said today. Well, yeah, my... Yeah, I didn't catch. I didn't even catch that. I, I was, you know, it's it's funny. I feel like I live in two time zones because I'm in Japan and I'm, you know, trying to live normal <laughs> hours in Japan. But at the same time, I'm constantly thinking about what's going on, you know, in the U.S. time and, you know, trying to keep up with my students and also, you know, with emails. So in the evening in Japan becomes the morning. Well, the, the morning starts right in the East Coast earlier. So my evening, I start getting emails from the East Coast. And then slowly I start getting way past midnight. I start receiving emails from more of, you know, from California. And yeah, it feels like if I don't reply to my emails in the evening, I don't get to reply until like the afternoon in the US. So I don't right. get an email back like for another day. I have to wait for another day. So yeah, it's it's this whole time zone I'm working on. But yes, for tonight or today, we're talking about um, the quest of becoming a musician. Uh, yeah, and, and, and what, what do we mean exactly by that? Because, uh, you know, it, it could mean you know how to how to learn an instrument really well, but I mean, I, when we say uh, becoming a musician, we mean a professional musician, right? Sure, professional musician. Right. So, and you know, and that that is, uh, you know, one of those sort of, well, I mean, except for people who are doing it, and and even for a lot of people who are doing it, um, it you know, it, if you meet somebody new, uh, and you say that you're a musician, they they always want to know. Um, you know, if, well, are you famous? Are you, you know, do you work with an artist they've heard of? Um, are you in a popular band? You know, do you work with a producer they've heard of? Um, it, it's, it, it, what they're trying to figure out is really, it's like, have you made it in music or are you a wannabe who's hoping to make it in music? And I, I think one of the things that young musicians um, need to understand or <laughs> the parents of, of young musicians who are very concerned about their, their, their child's potential, uh, you know, career choice is that it's, it's really a, a very broad spectrum um, of what it actually means to, you know, quote unquote, make it in, in music. Um, you know, sure. I mean, if you're, if you're in, um, you know, you know, you know, a top selling act and you've got a number one billboard hit and, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're all over, you know, the radio and, you know, streaming and top five, Spotify, Pandora and all that. Yeah. I mean, clearly, but the way I like to look at it um, is the, the music industry is sort of like a giant wave, right? Mm -hmm. And what most people see is they see the crest, of the wave, they see the little white froth at the top of the wave. That's that's Beyonce, you know. That's that's BTS. That's you know, you know, whoever's popular in country music. Sorry, I'm not I'm not a big <laughs> fan, but I understand they're yeah. huge. Um, 
that's what most people see and they don't really understand that there's this the rest of this wave and mm -hmm. the rest of that wave is full of you know singer songwriters independent musicians producers recording engineers um people in pub you know publicity record label execs um both major and independent um you know people who book tours you know people who you know they tech for it goes on and on and on and on and on there are literally hundreds of different things you can do and technically be in the music business um but you know for for me the the definition of what it means to you know quote unquote make it in music is i'm i'm earning a comfortable living and i don't have to do anything outside of the world of music and you know i guess one of the things we can we can kind of center on tonight as far as you know talking points is you know what are those things because you know it's not just being on stage you know any more than you know an actor um you know, I, I have friends who are actors. Some, some are rather successful, and man, the the it's like the the least amount of time you know they spend is in front of the camera. Um, that's that's like such a small amount of time. You know, they're they're writing, they're trying to get you know their their you know script picked up or you know optioned by a by a studio. They're you know. They want to. They want to direct. Is the cliche. They want to produce something. Um, they want to do theater, live stuff. They want to start, you know, a, a company. You know, like an independent studio. They, they want to do all these different things. You know, they go mm -hmm. off and, you know, whatever. It. it the, the list goes on and on and on. But it's. It's. Most people, all they see is them on their TV or their computer or on the, the, the big screen mm -hmm. and just assume that's that's where they spend all of their time and they just live there permanently and all they do is make movies and TV shows and and they don't. And, you know, except for a few artists, that's that's not the case in music either. So it's a it's a very diverse vocation is what mm -hmm. I'm babbling on about. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, thank you for <laughs> clarifying. Um, what professional you know what professional musicians are and and what the the mass see who you know as a music who are the musicians right um yeah and when do you call yourself you know a professional musician well That's... i've got a story i've got a i've got a cute story can i tell my cute story <laughs> Okay, Taylor, tell your cute story. Okay, thank you. Um, so I was maybe 10 and I was okay. taking guitar lessons at oh. uh, my local music store over in Speedway, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a teacher that I really admired. And, uh, you know, he played a lot. And he got paid and, you know, he was on, you know, some, some professional recordings and the whole bit. And, you know, he... To me, he was like, you know, this huge, you know, star. Um, and I, I, he got so tired of me sort of just, you know, like, wow, you're a professional musician. You're a professional musician. That's so cool. You're a professional musician. And one day he just goes, Scott, just stop. Play something. And I go, what? play what? And he goes, I don't care. Play anything. I'm like, oh, okay. So I just, I played a little something for like 10 seconds or whatever. And he mm -hmm. gave me a dollar. Mm -hmm. And he said, congratulations. Now you're a professional musician. Now get over it. And um, that, that never left me clearly because that was, mm -hmm. you know, quite a few decades ago. But it, mm -hmm. you know, the, the point was, if you're getting paid for something, you're a professional. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's, was my first, yeah, my first paying gig was a dollar. <laughs> When you were 10. When I was 10. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that was a cute story. Thank you. I, I, was, hoping that would, I was hoping it wouldn't come off more pathetic. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, for me, it was, um, it, it's, it's very difficult to draw a line. Like when, when you are a student, you know, studying the instrument to the point where I become a professional. Like basically, when you call yourself a professional, you're a professional. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think so. in, a, in, in a way. And um... I, I mean, why should it be any different in music? I mean, you know, if if, you know, somebody is graduating from college and they were a, a division one golf player, they're going to declare mm -hmm. they're going professional. Um, yeah, that doesn't mean they just declared they're Tiger Woods. They just declared that now they're going to make a living playing golf. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll see how that career goes. Sure. That, that's it. So, yeah, I mean, you, you're right. You just, I'm a professional musician and, you know, damn it, that, that's, that's that. 
and you know we'll see how it turns out mm. yeah so on our outline um we don't have an outline we're just completely well, free style well, this whole thing. Well, it is. I mean, we we sort of kind of think about what shall we talk about and then we, okay, we you know, okay, grow we, from there. We prepare. Um, we prepare. Yeah. <laughs> um so what what jazz. kind of <laughs> So, what kind of skills do we need as a musician? Well, I mean, I think it goes without saying you need to be able to make music. <laughs> I mean, that's the that's the, uh, the, yeah, the no, the no kidding um, point. Um, you know, I guess, I guess one, one thing is, you know, I mean, we're not just talking about classical music, obviously in classical music, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of training It begins very, you know, I started when I was six playing the guitar, Chica, you were probably one, six months no, old. No, I, I don't know. Well, I did have a little keyboard. There you um, go. Electric electronic keyboard so um i guess it started from there i probably was like one or you know, right one. okay That's, that would have been my <laughs> guess um. yeah but i started piano when i was about four so four gosh what took you so long it, you just couldn't figure out what you wanted to do <laughs> yeah I, I i was six which at the time was it was unusually early for guitar players mm -hmm. um you know I, I i didn't really take it seriously until i realized you could be in a band and that was a nice way to become kind of cool at school and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, you know, it, it's for classical um, jazz, I would say the same thing, you know, the, the skill set. there's just so much, so many years you have to put in, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if, if anybody in the audience um, has not read uh, um, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, um, I'd, I'd highly recommend you do. It's uh, fascinating. Um, and, and it's based on the, the idea that it takes roughly 10,000 hours of deliberate practice to really get super good at something. So, the skills. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to, you know, play golf on the PGA tour or, you know, you know, be a professional ballerina or, you know, whatever, then it's 10,000 hours of deliberate practice, not just goofing mm -hmm. around, but deliberate practice. But I mean, you know, there are a lot of you know, musicians who don't, don't do anywhere near 10,000 hours, you know, I think about the, the three chords in an attitude songwriter, um, who, uh, ends up doing very well, or, you know, the, the high school band that gets signed and, you know, off on the road, they go for the rest of their career. Um, yeah, so there are all sorts of different, different ways. So I, I get real reluctant to say anything about, uh, you know, how good does one have to be? I'd, I'd say you have to have something that appeals to the audience you're trying to appeal to. And, you know, Kurt Cobain had a very different um, set of skills than say, you know, I don't know, you know, Heifetz or Pieta Gorski. But um, the, the one thing that they could both do was, you know, they could both move an audience and, uh, and they could touch people. Um, and uh, so, so obviously you've got to have you know, something to offer as a musician. And, and I would also um, argue that uh, it needs to be authentic, um, at, at least for a, a, a long sustaining career. Um, you know, you could, you could be in, you know, the Spice Girls and have a great summer, but um, you know, there, there's a reason they're not doing a 40 year anniversary tour. Please don't be doing a 40 anniversary tour. Somebody's gonna look that up, but um, <laughs> whatever it was, but you know, if they are, I assure you, it's not the same as it was in the, in the day, yeah. but yeah, authenticity has to be part of it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'd say discipline, um, the ability to, to, to figure stuff out, um, you know, you can't do it alone. So you have to learn how to build teams. You have to, you know, know what you don't know and find the people that do know and, you know, get them to either do it for you um, and pay them or mm -hmm. teach you how to do it. Um, you know, I, I, I think, I think you have to be a problem solver. Yeah. And that, that's kind of the kind of the skill you need as a musician and also in, in any profession, right? Problem solving skills. And, but I, I especially feel in the music world and if you are an independent musician, you have to be able to solve problems, you know, very quickly and 
um, how the how is going to be very essential. Like how do how do you find that information? Like who do you ask, and how do you, you know, it's it's all the hows. Yeah, no, for sure. And you know, knowing what you don't know um, is is a, a huge part of it. Um, you know, I I remember when I was seventeen. And, you know, just, it was great back then. I knew everything, yet I'd learned nothing yet. So, you know, what a, what a wonderful place to be. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, found myself living uh, in Hollywood, California on Orange Street, right between Franklin and Hollywood Boulevard behind, yeah. uh, you know, the Chinese theater there. Mm-hmm. And uh, realized pretty quickly that <laughs> this, this isn't going to be as easy as I thought. Um, you know, it, it's uh it's it's really hard uh to do to do everything completely on your own so it, yeah. it, took, it took years I, I think to kind of figure out what I you wanted would think to- coming going to Hollywood will get you something right and and in 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 one way you meet people like you can connect with certain people you see so many inspiring things around you and that's right that's well that's really it, the yeah thing. I mean the joke I the joke I made when we got out there was like, gosh, I, I used to be, you know, one of the best guitar players in, in, you know, in the city. And now I'm not even yeah. sure I'm the best guitar player on the floor of my apartment building. I mean, <laughs> it was like, it was just musicians everywhere. It was completely mm-hmm. overwhelming. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and I, I, at least for me, um, going to school made a lot of sense R- rather than just toughing it out and, going out and trying to do everything on my own um the the other thing i liked about you know being a student and you know i at that time i was going to git at some musicians institute um and uh you know a lot of my friends went there um you know of course there's berkeley uh in uh in in boston um you know a place like that you you know, even even if you really are like the greatest musician ever, you go to schools like that to to meet people. They have referral services. You know, you you know end up making up great connections, not just with your 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 fellow students, but also with uh, faculty and staff. Mm-hmm. Um, most of which are really active in the industry. Mm-hmm. So you know, and they and they have to pay attention to you. You're you're literally paying them to pay attention to you. So, uh, you know, you, you've got their, their full attention and all you have to do now is just show, show them what you got and uh, they can open some doors. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that for, for me, you know, going, going to school, I know some, some people always like to point out, oh, John Lennon never went to school for music. And it's like, <laughs> so <laughs> what's your point? <laughs> I mean, it, 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 yeah, it, it, everybody has their, their own path. But uh, that, that's one that I found to be more reliable. And I, I find that people who tend to be able to make a living in music in whatever form tend to have, you know, at least a, some beyond high school musical training. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, don't, you don't have to have doctorates, you know, like we do, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we, we just get a, a diploma that, that says, you know, we received our doctor. That's, that's all we, that's, that's how, that's the time we spent to, <laughs> um, yeah, the, the prices we paid. Um, yes. Um, yeah, and um, it's, it's all about, you know, the, the school as well, but being persistent, right? Just, just be, just keep doing and yeah. it's one of the hardest things to do because, you know, we musicians, we have a lot of up and downs, and, but, but to continue that momentum, continue that motivation and continue that, you know, um, that musicality is, is uh, I think, is the, the main key of becoming, you know, yeah. a musician. Yeah, I think so. I, I think, um, I think also finding a way to you know making money playing music even before you're making money performing um you know or during um you know i, I think to say have you know a, a home studio where you're teaching you know kids in the neighborhood or you're giving skype lessons to people all over the place or teaching part-time at a you know city college something like that or you know, 
developing a career at a, at a university or a conservatory, um, yeah, there, there's no shame in that whatsoever. Um, I, I actually, it, it, what I've learned is, because you know, I remember, you know, back, again, back when I knew everything, um, I'm never going to teach. I'm going to be too busy performing. And it's like, okay, at least in classical and, you know, more and more in jazz and, you know, things like that, everybody teaches. Um, I don't know anybody who doesn't teach um, all the way up to like the top names. Um, <laughs> they charge more, but, uh, you know, they, they still teach on, on some level, even if it's just master classes. But um, to be able to make a living, to have money coming in, for sure, that you don't have to quote unquote hustle, hustle for, right? Um, you know, if you're at a place like, like, you know, I am, um, which, you know, also has things like health benefits and all of that, man, it really takes the pressure off you having to make every dollar, you know, you know, sing, well, what we call singing for your supper. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, piecing together a career, playing casuals and, you know, you know, you know, sideband jobs and things like that. That's a rough way to go. Mm -hmm. um, really a rough way to go. And, you know, the thing that I learned also is if you're at a, at a place, you know, I mean, you know, I, I, I teach in Los Angeles. So needless to say, you know, almost everybody in, in my music department has a professional career of some kind. So every one of those is a contact, just like those teachers were when I was a student. So, you know, again, you know, there's a lot of stuff. I've, I've gotten a lot of... Uh, great connections and doors opening just just from being at a university teaching music mm -hmm. and you know i'm not there five days a week nine to five you know lecturing i'm i'm it's it's pretty pretty it frees you up yeah i mean you know, we 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 take off and go to europe and you know i just go back to the you know airbnb or whatever and update all my classes return all my emails and then you know go back out for a nightcap <laughs> there's no reason <laughs> so yeah anyway um i, I yeah. would say be, be be flexible when it comes to teaching as well some people are just really stubborn about it they just refuse to do it because they think it's yeah. somehow a defeat and um you know i know i'm going on and on about this but i i i i have a, a well I, he's a friend now but he wasn't before he he came to my university to teach an instrument i'm not going to out him but uh, let's just say he, he was on the road probably 10 months out of the year, every year for the last mm -hmm. you know, 25 years. Um, not a guitar player, so don't be all guessing there. <laughs> but uh, he said something to me. He was so happy to get uh, just a couple, of, a couple of classes and a couple of students. He said, man, he goes, uh, everybody's so tired of touring. Um, he said, uh, getting a university gig is the new record deal. <laughs> That's what yeah. everybody was saying. I thought that was yeah. kind of cool. But, you know, mm. getting a record deal is also the new record deal. So that's pretty cool. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, Nothing wrong yeah with we have, uh, Scott, we have a couple of comments here. Um, Marco saying good evening. And um, hey, Marco. And David Gomez. Hi there. He was your student at Fullerton College. He's saying hi. Hey, David. Lo long time. Yeah, now I play guitar for a Grammy-nominated reggae artist. Yeah. See, see that—that's when people are, you know, telling me like, "What do your students do?" You know, later on, it's <laughs> like, you know, one one of my friends suggested putting them in touch with trade unions so they can go off and become like a carpenter or plumber. And it's like, oh. honestly, most of my students are in music, and they make a living in music. Um, you know, you just may not know because, you know, they're not, you know the number one on the billboard charts but you know there's a lot of different ways to to be active mm -hmm. and uh not necessarily have your your picture on a billboard somewhere but yeah very very cool um what does an independent musician's career look like is a a question um we'd like to explore a mm -hmm. little bit yeah. um and and obviously there's not one answer it's as yeah. broad as it's like saying what does a small business look like <laughs> i don't know it depends yeah so it's it's things. it's very different um 
people to people. And the way to become a musician is so different. I mean, musician is such a big term, but each individual instrument is different. Genre is different. Um, where you live, where you're based. Uh, you know, That's very true. Yeah, yeah. regionally, it, it varies widely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For example, where, um, well, I lived like over almost seven months ago. Can you believe it? I've been in yeah. Japan for seven months. But when, um, well, in LA, for example, there's so many musicians. And yeah. to be a professional musician and to keep, you know, getting gigs is extremely tough, right? And want to comment on that? Yeah, I, I, in, it's funny, in a, in a big metro area, um, you know, uh, Los Angeles is the one that I have the most experience with. Um, spent some time on the East Coast as well, um, not far from New York and New Haven. But um, so, you know, it, when you're in LA, sure, there, there's, there's so much competition uh, for, for work, but also there's a lot of work. Mm. And, you know, if you've got a large network of musical friends, um, your odds of finding work and, and have, you know, being somebody who grew up in the Midwest um, seem to be much, much, much greater just because mm -hmm. the opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's very competitive. So it, it may take a while for those doors to open up to you, but that's precisely why I suggested earlier, finding a way to make a living, you know, by teaching or, you know, whatever, um, to just sort of, you know, buy time. Um, another way to buy that time is to be a student. And, you know, I'll be honest, the reason I kept going, it's like, I, I finished at GIT. And it's like, do, do, am I famous yet? Do I have a record label? Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Um, well, um, guess I'm going to go to get my bachelor's degree. And I went to USC and just kept practicing and meeting as many people as I could. And, you know, you know, playing as you know many professional gigs as I could and you know then did a master's degree then did a doctorate it was, it's like a, a way um you know through scholarships and things like that to almost make a living um while you're trying to make a living if that makes a bit of sense but you know it, it, the the thing that drives me bonkers is that American idol culture <laughs> where you know the the girl from Topeka Kansas wins a regional thing in Topeka, Kansas, and they fly her out to Hollywood and she doesn't make it through the first round. And, you know, the next set of, you know, video clips is her crying about, well, she gave it her best shot. And now I guess she's going to go do something other than music. And it's like, wait, wait, you've been at this for like a week and a half. Mm. You know, it's, it's not a one big moment and you make it or not. You've got to have the wherewithal to sort of grind out a career. Mm -hmm. You know, that myth of being discovered while playing some club somewhere, you know, the, the, the a star is born kind of story um, where you just go from like, you know, a total obscurity to, you know, Lady Gaga and a head spinning amount of time. Um, I suppose it still happens. But, you know, if that's your standard, you're, it's not for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you need to you need to grow this from really the ground up, and yeah. uh, you know, being an independent musician that's mostly by yourself. Yeah, and, and it can take time. It does, and but it feels like the culture is changing these days. It's not um, the the conventional way was to hustle and then you know connect with people like it takes time. But now it feels like you know we have internet, we have our uh, there are ser streaming services. You can you know explode in one night if you get this one video or one music out on um, uh, online platform and yeah you know the, the it, viral it, hit right 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 and that doesn't necessarily mean that you know he, this person is a professional musician they they could do something extremely like vi you know cool looking <laughs> yeah, creating yeah. some kind of sound or some kind of music and then they could go viral so i i do see that the industry is changing 
And those probably producers and those people in the media, they are con constantly searching the web, the social media to, to see what's going on in, in on that platform. Right. Yeah. And, you know, even if you do meet somebody, um, you know, uh, uh, run into a producer, a &R, something like that, um, outside of social media, uh, what one of the things Cheek and I went through when we were, you know, label shopping for the for the record, um, the very first thing they do is they 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 basically do an audit of your social media. <laughs> so it's like, and that that's where it's like, oh, that matters. How many followers do you have? How many you know views on YouTube of this? Yeah. And how many you know, blog posts do you have? You know. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you know, they they really care about that stuff because you know that's that's basically you know, how, how is your audience? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it used to be, you know, how many people, you know, can you get into a club consistently there to see you? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, or if right. you have a CD out, are you on the hit chart? I mean, of course that, you know, those are the people in the hit chart was on the, the, the top of the pyramid as you talk. Right, about. right. No, but even, even, you know, if you, you know, had, what you know, what what some people call a demo um you know how 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 did your demo sell mm -hmm. um you know i mean there are a lot of uh examples of you know bands that they self-produced their first record um put it out on a you know diy record label i don't know why but i've got motley Crue in my head with uh <laughs> you know the, their first record on leather records and um yeah, they they ended up selling tens of thousands of copies, mm -hmm. and um, who was it? Electra, I think. I, I, I don't know. You're asking. I think it was Electra person. came along. <laughs> yeah, you don't know the history of Motley Crue, do you, Chica? <laughs> um, and it's weird. That's weird that that's what popped into my head. <laughs> but uh, you know, I but a lot of people think of a band like that is like, oh, they were you know they were just discovered and overnight. It's like actually they put their first record out because they couldn't get anybody to put it out for them. You know, and then the and then the record sold, and mm -hmm. then the labels were suddenly interested. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you yeah. just kind of have to show them, you know, how how it's done, or you know, a lot of bands that go through um, mm -hmm. sort of indie labels, mm -hmm. and then well, you know, that's how it used to be. Sure, but, sure, yeah, yeah. I I, okay. I actually really like the fact that more and more artists are able to bypass the whole, you mm -hmm. know, record traditional gatekeepers. Yeah. Um, and you, and you start seeing more interesting artists coming out because they're completely in charge of their own brand. Mm -hmm. They don't have anybody whispering in their ear. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, you should try to be a little bit more Amy Winehouse. You know, have you ever tried that? Let's, you know, let's just, let's work with that. And it's yeah. like, no, that's not at all what I do. Mm -hmm. So And people can communicate amongst each other too right how well the musician with the fans that's that too also between fans to discuss about music and as a musician we can you know read and we, we see what's uh, what's the interest um, and uh, th there's so many layers now in, in terms of communication amongst yeah this. yeah but you know when 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 I'm talking to you know, students who come work with me at the university. Um, and, you know, it's, I don't know if it's a generational thing. I've never, never really, I should probably start doing exit surveys or something like that. It's like really get this data straight. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, having, having a young student and I, I used to do this to my teacher all the time too. It's like, do, you, do I have what it takes? Am I, am I, am I going to be able to like make a living doing this? I mean, am I good enough? It's like, mm -hmm. you know, every every young musician is insecure, even if they don't look like they are. Mm -hmm. um, well, they don't start out insecure. They start out like 10 feet tall and bulletproof and all that. And then they go out into the world a little bit and the world kind of goes like, yeah. and then you start getting a little insecure um, mm -hmm. and you kind of have to like, get get over that and you know fight your way through it but. yeah so it that that story is written on this unfettered mind that um the album was named after our new album is called unfettered um yeah so it's this cycle of you know you're uh they, they talk about how the beginner 
you know, don't know what, what's going on. So they just do, you know, you know, punch left and right, <laughs> you know, it's kind of thing that they just, they just do whatever they can it takes to um, acquire the skills. And as you become an intermediate, um, you know, you start worrying about, you know, for, for example, in this book, they talk about like the swords and shit. So they they t- start talking about, you know, like the your hand position and your, you know, how, where the foot should be. Um, and you start thinking about so many things and get, get caught up in so many different ways. Yeah. And as you go around the circle and you become the, the master, like you, 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 be, you have this like full circle of k- kind of having the similar, um, mindset like the beginner where you don't have to think about anything but you can you know move just how you were when you were beginning where you, you can but of course you're you, you've, you've done the one round so you have acquired the skills and you you have things that are necessary but yeah um but that's the point yeah I, that that came up to my yeah mind no it's true yeah, you go through a little bit of self-doubt and um you know you can't you can't really be your authentic self mm-hmm. if you're you know questioning am i doing this right you know the whole time um you know it's like when you're walking across a room or something like that it's like am i doing this like left right and you're being mm-hmm. really self-conscious how's my posture how's this or that mm-hmm. and it's like you can't walk around like that for the rest of your life you're, you're eventually going to have to figure out um how how to make it natural mm-hmm. and um you know not not get all wrapped up with you know paralysis by analysis so yeah, you know, but but I mean, it's also at least in my my own case, I, I'm really honest with my students, because um, they assume you know you get to a point where you know you're just not nervous about playing, or you're not you're not questioning anything about you know what what you're what you're doing, and I'd say that the nerves they never go away; they just kind of change. Um, but yeah, they, they don't go away um, for sure. Everybody I know, you know, gets at least, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, nervous or they start doubting, you know, is this the right career for me? You know, things like that. Um, my, uh, my, my, my father um, helped me uh, greatly. I, you know, I'm sure he won't remember, but um, I, was, I was in, I was living in Hollywood or Pasadena, one of those places, I can't remember. Um, it was a while ago. And I, I was just like, man, this is, this is, this is crazy. Like I, I believe in my plane, but you know, I'm looking around and there's so much talent out here. And, you know, I, I know really talented musicians who, you know, they're not, they're not where they want to be. And, mm-hmm. you know, gosh, you know, maybe, maybe I could uh, start considering something else before it gets too late. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he said, he said, great, uh, make a list of uh, five things you'd uh, be happy doing other than music. And if there's anything on that list, do that. Mm-hmm. And I, I literally stayed up all night with a, a pen and a notepad. <laughs> and I couldn't think of a goddamn thing to, to put mm-hmm. on that list. Not one single thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for me, that was like, well, I mean, I, I would rather be miserable and broke playing the guitar um, than making a nice solid living doing something that I actually hate and then find myself, you know, turning 50 and just going, man, what a shoulda, coulda. Um, mm. that, that, that wasn't gonna happen to me no matter what. Mm. But, um, you know, I, you know, when I was mentioning the students earlier, I, I didn't really get to my, my main point, which was, you know, there, there is definitely a little bit of a socioeconomic side to it as well, um, because you know I, I knew I, you know I, I had a supportive family, and not not that they're going to pay for everything all the time, but you know they 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 were supporting me in this, um, and it, that's very different from some some students I've worked with where they're like, yeah, my parents hate the fact that I'm trying to make a living doing this, and they discourage me left and right. They keep saying negative things, and you know they're frankly trying to sabotage me because they want me to give up and go off and do something responsible with my life. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, man, it's hard enough when you've got like a, a cheerleading section behind you going, you can do this. 
you know, rather than have a bunch of hecklers, <laughs> they're mm -hmm. going, you're never going to make it. This isn't for you. Mm -hmm. There's so many good people out there, you know. Yeah, and then when those students persevere um, and go yeah. through, man, I, I have way more respect for them than, than uh, you know, many people. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at the same time, um, it, it's, it's, of course, getting negative comments like that left and right, it's not easy, but you sometimes you can't listen to others. <laughs> um, you can't really be so caught up in other people's opinion, especially, you know, what, when we are out in public and, you know, becoming a musician. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to get so many comments and, um, you know, they might like it or they might hate it or they have, you know, this opinion and that. And um, yeah, t Tony Romack. Hey, Tony Romack. I, I grew up. Uh, yeah. What? Five minutes from Tony's place um, with his uh, brothers. Uh, we used to go over there because, you know, we could do things. I wasn't allowed to do at my house. Um, and then, uh, you know, played a lot of loud music and stuff but yeah tony wrote uh la producers told tom petty he wasn't good enough and to go home don't mm -hmm. let someone's opinion of you take away your passion and dreams yeah. and, and these uh, days these days right. you know people can write opinions on twitter like you know and can write so many terrible oh, and good things too but terrible things too yeah. and um it, it's very easy for anyone to be you know, have this negative negativity. Well, you, you know, uh, I, I'm, I, I feel very fortunate that I didn't grow up in the age of social media. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're so obsessed um, with, you know, how, how many likes, what, are we getting good comments? Um, you know, things like that. And, and in some way, those things matter. Because like we said, you know, if you're trying to get someone to, you know, maybe work, you know, manage you or, you know, put your record out or, mm -hmm. you know, you know, produce you or, you know, work, work with you in some way musically, um, they're going to snoop around on your social media and see how people are reacting to it. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's not just a, a an ego thing. But um, yeah, it, it it, it used to be, you know, you would get a review in a magazine, a newspaper article, you know, an independent magazine. We call them fanzines. Um, and, uh, you know, they were written by people who actually thoughtfully sat down and listened to what you did. And, you know, that, that was that. Now just some jerk who just doesn't like your face can just go on there and just start trolling you brutally. And, you know, it's like, wow. Um I, I, I think the healthiest way to be is, you know, when, when people write good things about you, um, you know, you should go like, oh, that, that's very nice. You know, thank you. Um, but if you believe every good thing that is written about you, then you need to believe every bad thing that is written about you as well. You're, you're basically putting how you feel into the hands of others. Mm -hmm. So I think to have a, a strong will yeah. where it's like, you know, you know, if, if, if I didn't offend anybody, then I probably, it probably isn't very interesting. Number mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. right. You know, I mean, we, we always got comments, guitar and saxophone. What the hell? <laughs> you know, that didn't make any sense to anybody. It's like, wow, the two most unclassical instruments ever. And you've joined yeah. forces. Good, good job. <laughs> um, <laughs> you just, you're just, you're rooting for such a obscurity. Um, mm -hmm. And we just didn't listen to any of them. Just look at it in a completely different, different way. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just by the image, right? <laughs> and their stereotypes. Um, yeah, I, you know, I yeah. mean, they, they just have guitar and saxophone in their head, and that, that means something to them. Mm. And, um, you know, on, on some level, I know what they're talking about, but on mm -hmm. another level, I don't care. Mm -hmm. And uh, on a bright side um, of this is that I, I, I really love communicating with uh, my fans and our fans and um any comments are so uh, how can i put this um even the if, even if the, the comments are negative that they actually spend their time and energy to give that's, us the comments that's right? what i meant so, when i said you know if you offend somebody at least you got through <laughs> to them right yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah the, the, we, the worst thing it could be is ignored <laughs> Yeah. 
And but but they didn't do that. They actually spent their time to, you know, go in front of the computer and type something or you know, their phone, whatever. But yeah. So actually, right on right on point here. Um, Andy in the comments mm -hmm. section says, uh, "Depends what genre you're doing. Angst and anger can fuel rock musicians greatly." <laughs> um, you know, trust me, they can fuel classical musicians as well. Um, yeah, it, it. I I played in a trio for a while. Um, mm -hmm called line forms here and mm -hmm. uh, went through a couple of different uh, versions but the first version was with Steve Thatchik um, a, a Canadian player lefty uh, you know real versatile steel string nylon um, and uh, Jeff Young who used to be in a band called Megadeth um, he played on there Chica's going wow great what record Scott is it my favorite Megadeth record yes it is Chica it was so far so good so what um, although I, maybe you're more of a rust in peace girl, but, uh, yeah, I won't he, comment on that. <laughs> no, she has no idea who I'm talking about, but, um, I bet you everybody listening does. So Megadeth and, uh, but you know, he'd been playing, uh, uh, a lot of flamenco and finger style and things like that. And we had this trio and we actually, we actually created a little, you know, production company for our videos and things like that. It was, I think mm -hmm. it was called, uh, out of spite productions and our our whole thing was we're just doing this completely out of spite and every time somebody says you know you know that sucks you should go back and join a band like megadeth or something like that it just motivated us even more to mm -hmm. do what we wanted to do <laughs> so it's not just it's not just rock and roll but uh for sure you know rock and yeah the angry music um is, is greatly motivated by uh mm -hmm. people telling you you can't <laughs> You know, I, I wasn't even planning to work that hard, but I just really want to prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Andy so. saying, any plans for us to write original music? Um, I, I, I have. Um, actually, the, 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 the group that I just mentioned, um, we'd, all, we'd all written uh, pieces for it. And... Um, you know, I've, I've tried on and off over the years, and I, I've just sort of decided that uh, writing original music like what we do just really isn't my thing. And, um, you know, may, maybe that'll change sometime. Um, you know, I, I look at arranging as a type of composition. Um, you know, Especially for guitar, that's, that's like another level of arranging. Yeah, um, it's, it, well, I guess it's, it's like adapting. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like taking a Shakespearean play and adapting it for, you know, say a modern film or something like that. And, you know, so it's, we don't play any music that was written for guitar and saxophone. Um, it's, it's entirely our own interpretation um, of this. I wouldn't go so far as to call it a recomposition, but, you know, we certainly put our creative stamp on that. So, mm -hmm. um, Yes, I, I get I do get bored um, in the classical world of just playing other people's arrangements or other people's original compositions. And some of those are so detailed where it's like down to and you must play that E on the 14th fret of the fourth string. And it's like, uh, what, uh, that's a bit bossy, don't you think? Um, you know, not really leaving any room here for me. Um, you know, they've got metronome markings, very precise, 72. Mm -hmm. like, not 71, not 73, really, 72, right, right on it in every hall. Doesn't matter what the acoustics are. Okay, it's a little rigid, but um, I, I, I love arranging music um, for myself as a soloist, um, for the duo. And uh, that, that to me kind of scratches that creative itch. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, it, there, there isn't like a all or nothing. It's not just write yeah. your own music or just play what other people tell you to play I, I, mm -hmm. I believe we found a compromise that works for us yeah right and you know and i i also like to arrange um and you know create transcription for the saxophone uh, even before um we we as a chicken squad started playing um, but to me, to find the music that hasn't been done on the saxophone and to show that saxophone is capable of playing classical music and making it so beautiful that's you know that has been always been my goal and when 
we met the, the the guitar and the saxophone um we started playing i was like wow this this is going to be like a really great showcase showcase of you know the two instruments in the classical world yeah yeah and we all are we are both sort of motivated by that you know we're not really totally accepted as classical instruments the guitar more and more um, a lot of people don't know classical saxophone is even a thing yet, um, but uh, yeah, it's pretty I, I, big. <laughs> in, in certain Surprisingly, areas, yeah. In certain, but you know, I mean, you you know what I mean. If if somebody, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you just met somebody new and said, uh, "What do you do?" It's like, "Oh, I'm a cellist." You just assume I'm a classical musician, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if I say I'm a guitarist or I'm a saxophonist that's maybe not the first thing they assume they they mm -hmm. think you know oh, that's what i love about I, 15 I love, other things before yeah, they get to right yeah. that so that's what that's what i love when um i do concert or when, when we go to concert and they're like wow we i've never heard the two instruments sounding you know yeah. so and so or you know saxophone sounding the way you know yeah yeah it sounded or you know. no i think one of the first performances we did we were what was it? It was like the 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 something house, or I, I don't know. Um, oh, it was at a private private. Yeah, it was like um, a private, you know, something, concert. and you know, it was very a lot of people from the LA Phil, a lot of fundraisers, you know, um, you know, they're kind of a, and they they were sort of looking at us like, you know, you know, a two headed monster just walked out on the stage and started juggling. Yeah. And yeah. um, I just immediately said, I know what you're thinking, another classical guitar and saxophone duo. And everybody just cracked up because, you know, they, that's exactly what they were thinking. Like, what are these two doing? Yeah. And uh, people really loved it. And actually, one guy in the audience was a composer. And a couple of weeks later, we got a piece emailed to us. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we kind, we kind of like that we've got something to prove. Mm -hmm. sort, of, sort of thrive on that. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and Andy, thank you, Andy, for listening to our album. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, he, he agrees our work is original. Um, yeah, thank you. And, and you know, <laughs> actually, before before I forget, um, I, I definitely want to you know thank everybody who for the last uh, week or so has gone out and either ordered uh, the, the record here or downloaded it. Um, hopefully legally um, online. Um, <laughs> we we really do appreciate it, and uh, yeah. it's uh, it, yeah, it's it, it, it's great for those of you who have haven't listened to it. Um, it's all it's also available on Apple Music, uh, Amazon Music, all, all the um, online all the music platform, even on Spotify as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I did a yeah. I did a search on on that Friday, the day it came out, and. You know, it's like Target and Walmart and all these. Things. Wow. Okay, that was fast. Oh, um, it's it's a, it's a Target and Walmart as well. Well, you know, if if you're if you're not at Walmart, then you really <laughs> don't have a record out. Um, <laughs> I yeah. don't even know if they have even have like a. Remember, they have a they they used to have a CD section. Well, you know, gosh, I I I don't go to Walmart as much do as they I even, do. Do, I've I've never no, I, I, don't I don't think I've I think it's just Walmart it's their online. It's well, at their, least a Target. Yeah, I think it's their it's their version of Amazon. It's online and they have everything. So yeah, any, anything that gets mm -hmm. officially released is gonna show yeah. up there. But um, no, I, I don't I don't think they still sell physical uh, records <laughs> at uh, Walmart. But I would love for that to not be the case. They, they still do at Target, right? Yeah. They do. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't go to that section. I don't, I, you know, <laughs> I get distracted by the, the video game section. I never quite make it over to the, mm. to, to, the to the records. They sell physical books and stuff. So I don't know. But I do, I do, um, where I live, um, I have a, a full blown Barnes and Noble, um, not uh, wow. 15 minutes from, from my house. And it's so surreal because it feels like 1998 there all the time. So you, you roll in mm -hmm. and it's like a nice shiny Barnes and Noble and, you know, there's a Starbucks inside and it's packed and, you know, they've got a full record section. It's mostly vinyl now, but, you know, still got CDs. Mm -hmm. and I don't know. It's very nostalgic if you're missing that sort of thing. 
Yeah. But uh, we're assuming most people picked it up digitally, um, although you can order physical copies from Naxos Direct. And right. uh, we're hoping that um, people can use this as a, a Christmas present, too. I think it's 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 a, a great present. <laughs> oh, it's the best. Uh, Everybody in America yeah. should buy one of these for someone they love. <laughs> um, maybe two. Maybe two. I, why, why stop at one? I mean, just that's how much you love me. One. You should you should buy them, too. You know, <laughs> what, what, if, what if something happens to the first one? <laughs> Yeah, and during the shipment or something. <laughs> it's a digit pack. Not much can happen. In the shipment. <laughs> uh, I mean, if we're being honest here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're they're unbreakable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I, yeah, I so know we're. I, mm -hmm. So Andy's asking, um, thanks and Andy for tuning in. Um, do we have any advice for how to teach music in this digital environment via Zoom? Well, I, I've been on Zoom. Oh boy, since when? Um, since the this it start this corona started. So yeah. since March, we've fully on, be on, been on Zoom. And that's why I took off uh, from LA and came back to Japan. Um, but yeah, maybe that's a that's a good topic. How do we teach on Zoom? And how do we yeah. Yeah. How do we live in the digital world? Maybe that's a really good topic to talk about. You know, this. that we, Jake and I were, we, we usually around this time, you know, um, <laughs> announce what we're going to talk about next week. We were actually thinking it'd be fun to just say, hey, what do you want us to talk about next week? And mm. I, I think that that might have just did it right there. Um, mm. And, you know, this this is a real thing um, because so many of us do teach and you know, whether it's your primary source of income or not, you know, you still very much care about your students and you want to make sure that they're, they're getting something out of this. And, um, you know, it, 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 it deserves um, maybe some real time spent. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I just say that I've, I've, I've been teaching, well, not on Zoom. I honestly didn't know what Zoom was until about February, but, um, you know, I used to just call them Skype lessons, you know, giving, giving Skype lessons. Um, that, that's very different than if you have a group class. Um, mm -hmm. it, it really changes the dynamic if you have a group yeah. class. So if you're trying to teach 12 people rather than one, it, it, it makes it harder because of all the lag and end user issues. And, you know, if you're teaching kids, then that's even, you know, more of a challenge. You know, my, my 12 year old, if he ever sees this, is going to kill me for telling um, on him. But today he had a saxophone lesson. And I got an email from his teacher saying, um, oh, by the way, I could tell he was playing a video game during the lesson. And, uh, and if he does it again next week, I'm going to end the lesson. And it's like, oh, man, you know, <laughs> so, like, so it's like, man, you know, really? So, you know, if you're if you're with a kid, you know, it's it's just really not the same as them mm -hmm. being there um, physically. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah I, I, I think. I'm I'm sold. Let, let's yeah. let's let's do a yeah, deep how, dive into this. Yeah, next, and teaching, uh, and also week. how how we what what we're doing digitally these days as a musician too. Okay. Oh, we also got some confirmation. Yes, Walmart and Target still have CDs and also oh, some vinyl. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Oh. Who, who who would have thought that the the traditional record industry would be, you know, carried on by Walmart and Target? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well they're they're huge corporate yeah slightly slightly corporate <laughs> but um i'm more of a target guy if i if i'm being honest yeah, i haven't been to walmart in years <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i don't know walmart kind of freaks me out to be honest but not, not i can't quite put my finger on it um but yeah i, th I think yeah. i think that's that's good now next mm -hmm. week we'll we're gonna do a deep dive and um you know i'll, I'll just add that uh you know, in, in addition to, uh, you know, playing as a, as a guitar player, you know, as a soloist and, and with Chica, I'm also chair of a music department at a, at a large public university. And we had to figure out how to teach all kinds of musical classes, you know, piano and theory and ensembles and, you know, private lessons, all that online. So we've had the last, uh, seven, eight months to get a crash course on all of that. So I think, uh, I think we could we could go on for quite a bit about that subject. What do you think? Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fan fantastic. Um, that that brings us to the top of the hour. 
and um, you know we we love the uh, people who join us here live but you know also thank you so much to all the people who seem to tune in sometime in that 48 hour window after we post the the video um, it, I guess if all those people showed up we wouldn't be able to keep up with the chat right because it's usually a, a lot but uh, hello to all of you as well and mm -hmm. you know feel free to continue to write in the comment section um, yeah. and uh, you know give us some give us your feedback yeah okay well thank you so much everyone and good talking with you scott okay okay bye bye now